It's time now for our panel, Kelly Sloan and Francis Owusu. So great to see you both. Thank you so much for coming in and great to have to you be here. in real yeah. life as well. You're actual humans. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, yeah. former Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage, he's touring Australia right now. He said the seats lost by the Liberal Party to the Teals at the federal election are gone forever. Kelly, you disagree? I disagree entirely. Yeah. Now, look, I'm a Liberal Party member. I'll declare that up front. But I like to think of these seats as borrowed, not lost. <laughs> Um, and it, there's no reason we shouldn't win them back. And the, the only reason we, we won't is if we don't listen to the message that's been delivered. And we, we delivered quite a comprehensive kick up the backside, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the things that we were beaten up about are the issues that are really central to the belief system of the Liberal Party, a, a party of integrity. You know, that, that isn't a slogan that can be stolen by the Teals. And so many other matters. And I think what we're going to see over the next few years is Teals... Um, who represented a very strong and a very meaningful, and I don't dismiss it, protest vote, will have very little influence sitting on the crossbench. And I hope that next election, uh, the electorate will say, we, we want representatives of action. And if the party has shown that it's listened, has greater female representation, can better articulate its values and its policies, then there is no reason why we can't win those seats back. Well, there you go. We'll watch and see with interest. We'll yeah. come back to you and see after you've given it a red hot crack yourself. Where are you up to, by the way? With attempting I'm, I'm to still attempting politics. to be a candidate in state politics where I think those Liberal values are shining very strongly. So I think it'll be a different space in the state election. Well sold. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> we'll watch with interest that as well. Now, we have a huge skill shortage and labour crisis in this country. A poll in the Fairfax Papers reveals only a third of Australians back the Albanese government's decision to raise the permanent migration cap to 35,000. Francis, you are the son of migrants from Ghana. What, what was their story? Well, the thing for me, um, my parents came here as diplomats. Yeah. And so their story journey was different. They were brought here um, by the country. But I think um, resettled here, we, they migrated, uh, they resettled here and became um, natural citizens. I think the biggest challenge I think we have in our country is the opportunity, what I call opportunity overload. Mm. Now, my parents told me of old stories back in their home country where they had to, like, struggle to get, get ahead. And most people that come... To this country is a beautiful country it's because mm. of the opportunities we have and the opportunity to have a better life and i think in the challenge i've seen uh, we've just released a new program called the creative pathways to employment program which is funded by the federal government which is trying to encourage 17 to 24 year olds to get skills and get into employment and i'm talking to other training providers and the challenge they're having is finding people that will take up free um, yes. um job opportunities so i think you know in this country here we've been blessed that We've had tough times, and there are not to say times, you know, rising interest rates, cost of living, all those pressures are bringing hard times. But compared to, say, from third world countries, somewhere where my parents came mm. from, Ghana, it's chalk and cheese. And so I think the tough times haven't really settled in where we've had so many opportunities. It makes it hard for people to aspire to get in, get themselves ahead when yeah. you've already got a leg up. They're almost not forced to. And I spent a lot of my childhood in Indonesia and, and during 98, particularly when the Sahara regime fell and mm. there were riots, there's poverty on the street, lepers by the side of the road. You learn to appreciate the opportunity mm. we have here in Australia and it's not their fault, a lot of kids, but if they're born here and they don't understand, you know, they're a bit spoiled, aren't they? Yeah, they, they are, but then we are crying out for... for, for for labour. There is a, a severe labour shortage and I think what the story in the Sydney Morning Herald showed today, or Fairfax newspapers showed, was that there isn't that understanding of the dire need that we mm. do need for, for foreign labour. Whether it's in our aged care facilities, we need labour there. Whether it's in our restaurants and our mm. bars, whether it's people to pick our fruit, we need labour desperately and there is a massive backlog at the moment. There are 9,000 Aussies mm. or permanent residents who can't get in because of a backlog. We need to fix that first mm. and then looking at bringing skilled migrants into this country. Yeah. And the other thing I think is important to think is, you know, we, people retire and they have a whole... Pop we are an ageing population and there's all these skills that are still valuable. And I think this idea of that once you get to a certain point that you're irrelevant... I think there are still some opportunities within our own country to not forget about older people. 100%. Oh. And the same survey showed 77% of people backed having pension as being able to earn more without losing their pension. Well, they're mm. penalised. And Peter Dutton, mm. actually, since... Yeah. I, I don't know where the coalition were whilst in government, but since being a leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton's been very strong mm. on this in terms of pushing for senior Australians to be able to work. And New Zealand actually does it better than anywhere else. Now, the New South Wales government has asked the Murdoch Children's Research Institute to look into kids' anxiety, having returned to school after big chunks of time off during COVID. 
They say kids have lost skills like taking turns. It sounds really simple and we're obviously talking about young ones here, but I know that my daughter would struggle if she wasn't at preschool for a while. She's an only child with that concept. Kelly, you've got three kids. Francis, you do as well. Yeah. I'll, I'll go to you first. How did yeah. your kids go going back to school and former CEO of Life Education as well? You yeah. would have seen this firsthand, I'd imagine. We saw firsthand the, the anxiety in young children, in particular, when they, when they started school, and the anxiety of the parents as well, mm. and that sort of follows through. So little kids, especially the kindy ones, who haven't figured out how to catch a ball yet or take turns, I mean, that's heartbreaking. Now, my kids are a little bit older. They're 9 and 14 and 16. I just wanted them out of the house because I couldn't... <laughs> I could not afford to feed them anymore. <laughs> just like, go back. I don't care if you're anxious, go to school. <laughs> Francis, what about you work? So you run an organisation called Culture Break, which is brilliant. You do a lot with young kids. Mm. Have you seen that in, in coming back to classes? Yeah. Dance classes is one thing that you guys do. Yeah, I think the big thing is the social connection. I think that's what gets... To get off. Education is important. Let me put it out there. Be in school, get education. Mm. But we go, kids go to school to be social. And I think that break of habit of being social, connected, connected to their mates, but also too, uh, they've gone back to school, but not all the restrictions have left mm. prior to COVID. I mean, my daughter went to a camp and the things that they would normally do at camp, they changed the camp location because of COVID restrictions and stuff. So the things that they would look, normally look forward to have been changed. Mm. So I yeah. think that's that sort of thing of that loss of, what you look forward to, that sense of anxiety yeah. increase, but also the teachers as well themselves. They are also, uh, you know, a challenge with what's happened to them when they got their overworked. Um, they also have a skills shortage in, in education. Mm. Uh, and so the pressures are coming from all angles yeah. and there are converging on the kids, I think. Oh, it's tough for everyone. Well, the Murdoch Research Institute will do wonderful work, no doubt. Now, sport. Geelong, My congratulations favorite. at Geelong fan over here. My couple of favourite moments from a weekend. Congratulations to Geelong who beat the Sydney Swans in the AFL Grand Final. No, thank these you. These two <laughs> moments, OK, what? Sydney Swans supporter over here. Uh -huh. uh, these two moments, Joel Selwood running uh, Gary Ablett Jr.'s son onto the field. It was absolutely beautiful. And then his celebrations at the end, which was really special. And then Roger Federer retiring the emotion mm. with his great mate, Rafa Nadal. I'm giving you the moment here to, to end. Oh, well, i got to say... Uh... Uh, I'm not a bandwagon. I grew up in Geelong, and so, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm very excited. But look, I think the the thing for me, there wasn't a moment during the game. I think it was post game, and pre game. Like you did mention um, the moment with um, Gary Ablett's son, uh, junior son. But I think just the mateship and the bondship of them. You know, people would say that Geelong was too old, too slow, and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> and the fact that they've stuck at it, and the mateship, and how the teammates Aww. talked about Joel as a person, as a leader. I think is a testimony Sweet. to who he was and also the club culture. And this is why sport cops such a bad rap. And look, there's certainly some deserving elements for it. We've seen that. Well, I don't need to give examples. We all know. But it's special, isn't it, what they can do? Oh, it is, absolutely. The they can make. Except when you have a marathon yesterday of the Bladerslow and the NRL oh, and the oh. AFL and there was only one good result in the whole thing. <laughs> that sounds horrendous. Yeah. yeah, I know the Bladerslow Cup is a whole other kettle oh. of fish. Did you watch that? No, I didn't watch that. And no? uh, after last week's heartbreak, <laughs> the it's, too, it's too hard to watch. <laughs> okay, so it's beautiful. Okay, well, both of you, thank you so very much for your time Good here to tonight on Erin and can't wait to see you both again right. very soon.